All right, class, so we're back on question number two here. Okay, so notice three meters is going this way. At this point, it is frictionless, and then we have friction. Okay, um, so we know the coefficient of friction over here. So first, draw and label all the forces. Okay, so um, let's do some forces here. One of the key ones people missed, force of gravity is always down, okay? All right, and then the only other force on this ramp is gonna be force normal, okay? If you wanted to put in friction and apply, that's fine, but those um, are both zero, so I'm not gonna draw them, okay? And then we would have our force over here, so we here, like, well, I'm just doing my other box. Okay, so now I'm gonna have my force of gravity still straight down, force normal still straight over, okay. Force of friction opposing motion, and this one, there is no uh, applied force this way. Okay. Um, Notice two things. I did not break this into a triangle yet. I did not do any of the other numbering here, okay? Um, so that is drawing, labeling all the forces of the block, okay? When I break this down into another component, I'm gonna do that separately. I'm not gonna do it up here. So I make sure when it comes time for an AP exam and AP graders, I'm not confusing them on knowing this and knowing the core forces versus the component forces, which is gonna be the X and the Y. Okay, so let's take a look at this. How much gravitational potential energy does the block have at the top of the ramp? Okay, well, now we can look at this. We know that um, gravitational potential energy, I like to write it like this. Some people are gonna write it as that, okay? Either way, we're gonna to have to do this, okay? So we know the mass of the block, okay? Always useful to write some of these things down. Okay. And H, what's H gonna equal? H is gonna equal three meters times, okay? This is where I don't wanna draw on here yet. I wanna do my own triangle off to the side here. Okay, so if this is 30 and this is three meters, then H is gonna be over there. So that is gonna be the sine of, what was it, 30? It was 30, 30 degrees. Okay, so H should equal 1.5 meters. Okay, so now I can do six kilograms times 9.8 times 1.5 and that should get you down to 88.2 joules, okay? All right, by the way, the scoring, two points here, two points here, three points there, okay? And then, so I'll just, I'm gonna give myself a little grade here. Very good, Mr. Schmidt. All right, now how fast is the block moving when it leaves the ramp? So a lot of people try and use kinematics in these types of things. We've already determined energy. So let's use the information we know and see if we can solve this in an easy way. Okay, so if that's how much energy it has here, that's how much energy it has here because it's not experienced any friction yet. Okay, so even though we don't know time, we can still say, um, I'm gonna be working on the equation. Initial energy equals final energy. So I can say my 88.2 joules was my initial energy. And my final energy was gonna be this. Notice there's only one block, so I can do that without adding anything else. That's gonna catch us, a lot of people in this next question. Okay, so now we can do our 88.2 joules equals one half six kilograms times V squared which is means V equals 4.2 meters per second. Okay, so that was another three point question. All right, 
how far will it slide on the carpet? So this is where people did a lot of work to figure out acceleration and did the kinematic equations and then found uh, distance. That will work as long as you're very careful with all of your algebra. What I want to do is look at this and say my energy at one is going to equal, or excuse me, my change in energy is going to equal my work, which is going to equal my force times distance. I want to know this distance, so I just have to focus on this. If I want to know this distance, I just have to focus on this force. Okay, so now I can do a little aside here. Okay, and at this scenario, my normal force is going to be equal and opposite to my force of gravity. Okay, so now I can do my force of friction equals mu times m times g, which is going to be 0 0.4 times 6 times 9.8. Okay, and that gets you your 23.52 newtons. Okay, so um, a lot of people did these steps here. Um, but again, what you do with that um, can determine how much uh, algebra you have to do for all these points. Okay, so now I know my force. So I can plug that number in here. Okay, my energy has not changed from here to here. So I know it is going to lose 88.2 joules. Okay, this is Newton's. And now I just need to find my distance. So I'm just going to do 88.2 divided by 23.52. And that should get you something pretty close to uh, 3.75 meters. Okay, I've seen uh, two other ways for people to come to this answer. Okay. The one thing you can't avoid is knowing this. You, like I said, this seems to be the easiest way to solve it, um, but there were other ways to come to that answer.